Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video on making a quiz game in Unity. In this video we're going to start programming the game in C Sharp. And today we're only going to be programming the back end, some of the actual functionality, and then in the next video we'll have a look at showing this on the UI. So today we'll only be using uh, Visual Studio to program in. Uh, you can of course use Mono Develop that comes with Unity. It doesn't matter, that's just the uh, script editor. And uh, then we'll be using the Unity console to display what we're making. So that's all. So without further ado, let's jump right into Unity here. And you can see the project is exactly as we left it the last time. Uh, and if I go into Material UI, you can see that we uh, used the starter scene here. I now want to uh, rename this to our main level. And I want to take this and drag it under the assets folder, just so we have our main level scene here. Uh, you could also just call it main or whatever. Actually, I'm just going to call it main since the idea of levels is not something we're working with in this game. Now let's go ahead and create an empty object by right clicking in the hierarchy and select create empty. Let's drag this to the top. Let's reset the transform and rename this to our game manager. And this is going to host the central script containing all of the uh, logic that our game needs. And one second, let me just move a wire out of the way here. Uh, so the game manager containing all of the uh, game logic. It will uh, load in questions, it will choose a random question, it will check whether or not it's true or false, and it will uh, load the next question. So that's what that will do. And then we are also going to add a separate script down here. So right click, create C sharp script, and we're going to call this one uh, question because this is going to be storing uh, what information we want to have for each question and now we can go ahead and double click this and you can see again mine is uh, opening in Visual Studio. Uh, if yours is opening in Mano Develop, that's just fine. It's not going to make any actual difference. It's just going to look a tiny bit different here. So you can see here uh, that uh, we can first off delete these two using tags because we are not going to uh, be using either Unity Engine or uh, System.Collections. We can delete the derived from mono behavior and we can delete these two starter methods. So we just have an empty class. And C Sharp is of course an object oriented programming language. And that means that we have the ability to sketch out and describe different objects in our game. And the first object we are creating here is a question. And that's not only the um, question itself, I mean that could be um, is there water on Mars? Uh, that's just a simple string. We also need to have some kind of understanding of an answer. So that could be one example or multiple answer options should also be within this question class. So whatever information is associated with a single question is something we are going to store in here. And uh, the first thing I want to do here is I want to tag this as a system dot serializable. And all this means is that it will notify Unity and the system that this class uh, can be saved and store information. And the cool thing uh, that this will allow us to do is edit it in the inspector when we implement it later. So we can uh, make all of our different questions not in here, but inside of Unity. And that's going to be a, a true luxury. So the first thing that we want to do here is make a public string. This is this of course being some kind of text. And uh, this string is going to be called fact. Because in my game, I want uh, to display a series of facts that are either true or false. And then the user can guess whether or not they are true or false. So the question here is going to be the fact. It could also be the uh, actual question. You can't do question here and then simply call it by saying question dot question. But I'm going to call this fact. And then we're going to have a public boolean that is either true or false. And this is going to store whether or not the fact is true. So this is just going to be called is true. And notice that I'm not setting any defaults for this. I'm not setting them to any particular values. I'm just saying that this is what needs to be inside of the question class. Now we can move on to uh, the other script we created, which is the game manager script. And uh, here we can uh, keep both Unity Engine and System.Collections. We are going to be needing them both and uh, derived from mono behavior. However, we are going to 
remove these two methods. And the first thing that we want to create here is uh, some kind of list of questions. More specifically, we're going to be using an array. Remember in C Sharp, we have two different ways uh, that primarily two different ways of storing a series of data. And uh, those are called arrays and lists. And they both list just a bunch of data that are associated with a number in the list. But the array is used when we don't need to resize the list. And the list is used when we do need to resize it at runtime. So you can see here, because we are always going to have a fixed set of questions uh, that we specify beforehand before running the game, we can use an array. And to declare an array, we do a public question. So uh, we don't want this to be a single question, we want this to be an array, so we go like that. And uh, then we call this questions. So this is a list of uh, questions uh, specified by the question class. Then inside of our start method, and this is called whenever we start the game or we reload the scene, well, we want to have some kind of... Uh, uh, well, right now we have an, a list that stores all of the different uh, questions we've created. And if we go out and minimize Visual Studio and go back into Unity and select the game manager, you can see here that it's already appeared in the inspector. Again, you need to make sure that you've tagged the question class as system.serializable or it's not going to appear. But if we go over here now, we have this array and we can make this a size of three and we now have three different elements, three different questions in here that we can configure. So the first fact could be um, I am a genius and I apparently don't seem to be because I can't spell genius. So I am super cool and this of course just happens to be true. Uh, we have another fact which is uh, violets are red and that's not, uh, that's not true. And then we have uh, the final uh, statement or fact, and that is that two plus two equals four. And that happens to be true also. So now we have created three different questions and uh, we've specified whether or not they are true. We can simply collapse these and now we know they are there. So that is what is stored inside of this questions array. However, when running the game, we want to keep track of which questions we have already answered. And uh, the way that I want to pick questions is I want to pick a random question, but I don't want to be able to pick the same one twice. And therefore, we need a private and now we don't need an array, we need a list. Because I want this list to contain all of the different questions in the beginning. And then and as we answer more and more questions, I want to remove them from the list. So this is going to be a private and then it's going to be a static. And the reason why I'm making this uh, a static question uh, is because I want uh, this um, question list to persist between scenes. So when we reload the scene to load in the next question, uh, this uh, um, it's going to remember what is stored. So I want to make a private static and in order to use a list, we are going to go up here and say using system.collections.generic and now we have access to lists. So a private static list and the syntax is a bit different here and then we're going to put in the question like that and then close it off uh, or of course we need a name uh, so the name here should be uh, unanswered unanswered this is not correct there we go unanswered questions and uh, simply close that off then in the start method when we start our game, we want to load in all of the different questions into the unanswered questions so that when we begin our game for the first time, all of the questions that we have available will be unanswered. But we only want to do this when starting up the game. We don't want this when changing scenes. And start is loaded every time we change a scene or we re reload a scene. And therefore, we need some kind of method for checking whether or not we've already done this. When we haven't done this, meaning by default, before we load these questions in, there's nothing in this list. 
Therefore, it is marked as null. So what we can simply do is check if unanswered questions is equal to null, meaning there's nothing in the unanswered questions list. Well, then we can go ahead and say that unanswered questions equals questions. However, there's a tiny problem with this, uh, and I'll show you that in a second. The first thing that I want to point out is that it is actually possible for there to be Whoops, looks like I hit a button there. For there to be um, zero elements in the list, but for it to not be marked as null. And that is if we have, have answered all of the questions, uh, meaning that we've done this step and then gone through all of the questions, then the amounts of questions in the list will be zero, but it has still been declared, so it's not equal to null. And therefore we need to also check uh, if um, if unanswered questions dot count, meaning the elements and uh, the number of elements in the list is equal to zero, then we just want to start over. And this is of course the or. So we'll do this step if this is true or if this is true. Then down here, we can't directly set a list equal to an array. We simply want to take all of the things in the array and load it into the list. And in order to do that easily, we can go up here and say using system.link. And uh, what this uh, does is it offers a bunch of methods to make stuff like this very easy. So we, we have now uh, have the ability to say questions.toList and it's going to be a questions list and top that off. And that will do that step four. So um, to wrap up, what we've done here is we've created a, uh, a, an array of questions that we fill in in the inspector. Then when we begin the game for the very first time here, uh, we make sure to load those questions into a list of unanswered questions. So the next task would be to get some kind of uh, random question. And uh, the current question that we uh, the user can answer is something that we are going to store in a private variable. So we're going to have a private uh, question, and this is singular because it's only one question at a time that the user can answer. And uh, this uh, private uh, question is going to be um, called current question. There we go. And then down here, we simply say, um, pick random question, choose random question, get random question, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to say get random question is what we want to do here. And now we need to specify what that means. So we'll say void get random question. We're going to make a function here that does this for us. So uh, in here, what we need to do is we need to choose a random number between zero and the number of elements in the unanswered questions list. This way we get an index, a random index, that points to an, a random element in the list. And we'll store this as an integer. So this is going to be the random question index, and it's going to be equal to random.range. This will give us random dot dot range, there we go, this will give us a random integer between zero and the number of elements in the unanswered questions list, with, which is unanswered questions dot count. There we go, and round that off. And what we can do now is we can temporarily, uh, we can set current question equal to, and then unanswered questions, and then we want the element at index random question index. There we go. So uh, let's say right now we have uh, three elements in the list. This will get a um, either uh, zero, one or two to access that element. Let's say we get a, a, a one here. This is going to be now one. Then it's going to take element number one out of the list and put it into current question so we can access it up here uh, or from where we want inside the script. The cool uh, thing now is that we can simply go ahead and remove that same question. So from the list, now it's already answered. Actually, it's just loaded in, but we'll just uh, pretend like we've already answered it. It's going to be basically the same thing. The only edge case would be if we went to a menu of some sorts 
um, when right when this was happening before we actually answered it. Um, but um, that's some weird behavior that we are not going to um, be uh, thinking about. So uh, the next thing we want to do here is we want to say and on unanswered questions dot remove at and it, this means that we specify an index uh, of an element that we want to remove and that's of course going to be the random question index and now it's gone from the list it's something simply, simply like it was never there and uh, we can uh, make sure this way that we don't pick the same question twice Good, so now that we've gotten a random question, let's just try and print this out in the console. So we can see that this is actually working. So let's say debug.log, and again, we are going to be displaying this in the UI in a, in a later video. Right now, I simply want to see if this is working. So we're going to print out uh, current question dot fact, and then plus, uh, and I'm just going to make a space and then say is space plus current question dot is true. So we're going to print out the fact and whether or not it's true. Let's try that for a second and we are going to do this every time we uh, hit uh, play. So if we go to the console here, it should show one of these and the corresponding boolean value. So we can see here it says violets are red is false. And if we go there, you can see it's marked as false. We can now uh, simply restart the game here. It uh, picked the same one. We can try that again. Now it says, I am super cool, is true. And indeed, we set that to true, however true it might actually be. And now you can see it actually chose the last one here. So it says two plus two equals four, and that is true. So you can see that it's now correctly choosing a random question. It's n it uh, does uh, sometimes change uh, the same question or choose the same question over and over, but that's because we are actually right now restarting the game and not just reloading the level. When we get to the actual level reloading, you will see this working. So uh, that was basically it for uh, this video. In the next one, we'll have a look at uh, implementing this with the UI to make it more responsive. We'll uh, implement what is going to happen whenever we choose whether or not it's true or false and uh, maybe even display it um, in some way. So uh, we'll have a look at that. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this format, uh, please let me know in the comments and also I have a lot more coming, don't worry. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh,